Now in the United States, I don't know. I know we got some viewers that live overseas. We got some friendly neighbors up north, but in the United States, there has been an ongoing debate and I hate talking about a debate between the need of vaccinations in, you know, to, to give the children so they're not impacted by diseases that we defeated in the 1930s, you know, um, and now it's becoming very clear that um, the research on, you know, the, the fear of, you know, vaccinations and that they cause autism is now again being debunked again, because we got to remember the guy who made that theory did that you know he was paid under the table to make some statements like that he falsified his information and now there's some more information about vaccinations and what they do to actually help people remember vaccinations are there to help people if you look back at some of the videos from the 1950s you had numerous people waiting in line just so they can make sure the kids don't suffer from the diseases that they dodged thankfully so daniel what's going on here man Okay, so I want to just say that I think that this is another example of vaccines are too successful. Mm -hmm. And people have forgotten why they existed in the first place. And now we have people like, oh, there's a 1 in 3,000 chance that my kid will get a seizure from vaccinating or, you know, some complication. Because, you know, if you expose enough people, if you expose a million people to anything, whether it's safe. I mean, there are people that are allergic to water. Just, just to be the big perspective on this. So is it a thing to say that vaccines sometimes have negative side effects? Yeah, everything does. Everything's poison in a certain amount. It's not really a big, new, exciting statement. It's just a getting in the way kind of statement. Like when people argue, oh, it's the climate change is real, but you know, it's natural and there's natural fluctuations. So we as humans shouldn't be, it's that kind of an argument. And for me personally, I see one of the greatest inventions in human history that has saved more lives than just about any other. Vaccines have saved, I believe up, up to a billion lives since they were introduced on a wide scale. And even today in Africa, you'll see people walk for 60 miles just to more get that. that. Even, even more than way that. Way more than that. To, just to get vaccines. However, there was a giant study that has been done anyway because so many people are so into conspiracy theories and they will say, hey, this discredited uh, British doctor who's not a doctor anymore because he failed at his studies so bad and Jenny McCarthy are better representations of what we should follow medically. And again, I would I would advise anyone, if you ever see an anti-vax rally, uh, figure out if a doctor's in there. Chances are you won't. You Wait, know, hold on. There's actually an interesting comment, too, that I want to bring up. Uh, it's from Carbamos. He says, you know, we want to give a shout out to you. Thank you for joining us. He writes, anti-vaxxers are a problem in Canada. Also, the government has had to crack down on them, especially with the measles outbreak. It's amazing how much death that quack doctor caused with his false study. Man, and look, and the thing is, too, we also have, on some occasions, uh, some outbreaks of diseases that we thought we defeated in the 30s here in the United States. It's ridiculous that here... Uh, especially in the Western Hemisphere, um, we have young people being impacted by diseases that were thought to, feat, to be defeated. And so, the thing is, it's, it's ridiculous the, and it's stupid. Let, so me give, let me give some numbers now. Okay. So this study that they did, uh, did a study on 657,461 children. I think that this one specifically, I really like where this ends, and I think you'll like where it goes as well. So during that time of those people that got vaccinations, uh, 6,517 were diagnosed with autism. Now, for everyone that knows those the two uh, developments, you generally it just people that develop the symptoms for autism that they were born with just happen to manifest around when the shots come out anyway. So that's why some people see the causation uh, or correlation rather than any form of causation. Now, what's interesting is, especially with measles, which is what we're seeing right now, because measles is so immensely infectious. You can be on a surface for many, many hours. If you sneeze in a room, that someone that has measles sneezes in a room, it has a 95% contagion rate. It is a, it is a immensely contagious disease. And of course, we're seeing it sprout up everywhere where people have stopped vaccinating because it just is that quick at replicating now. The important thing is that the argument that we have with parents is that I, I want to pick a part of that argument a little bit as well is, yeah, but the vaccines cause autism, which is an interesting thing because it makes it sound like you would rather your child die of a preventable illness than have autism. I just, I'm not going to say anything more on that. I'm just going to say it's an interesting, direct next step to that statement. But what was very interesting about this is, it turns out, 
And here's something you can spread everywhere. This is a disease you do want to spread. If you don't vaccinate, according to this study, you have a 17% higher chance of having autism. So if you ever hear someone say vaccines cause autism, you now know and have a, a study to cite that says, no, actually you have a higher chance of having autism right. if you don't vaccinate. So on top of vaccination, saving more people than just about anything else, being absurdly successful at stopping diseases that debilitated the entire population 100 years ago and making them so successful that they don't even exist in reality so that people think that these vaccines mean nothing because they've forgotten where they came from and then conclude because of faulty ideas from non-doctors and people that should have no right to speak on health, Jenny McCarthy, disgusting. Imagine how many people that her blood is on her hands that she, of course, would say there's no blood on her hands. They are not only wrong about their assertion that vaccines con ca cause autism, that the reverse is true, according to this study. Yeah, and there, there's another thing, too, to take away from this is that, look, these diseases that we defeated, smallpox, polio, measles, just, just to name a few, these are things that really devastated a lot of communities. Children died because there were no, there was no vaccination or cure for these diseases. And now we have it in our power to make them a non-existent threat. Now, are there always going to be problems with diseases, future diseases and problems? Absolutely. But the United States, being a developed country, shouldn't be dealing with problems that we defeated in the 1930s. We shouldn't be dealing with an issue of whether or not we should vaccinate our kids. We, we need to make sure that we have a healthy population because these, these diseases are very contagious and can devastate communities and take away lives. And nobody wants that to happen. I don't want that to happen. And I think, as, as just a final note for this story, uh, Where's the art? What's the article in which our viewers and subscribers can actually learn, uh, find it online on social media? We actually, it should be in the description of this video. It's an NBC mm -hmm. uh, news story. With the headline: Another study finds no link between autism as me and measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. Fascinating. So it's there again. This is important to me because vaccines are like the baseline of the modern era. Like the modern era is built on. Okay, let me put it this way: in the medieval era. Cities didn't grow because people, because cities grew. If people from the farms did not continue to migrate into cities, they would just die off because there was so much disease. It was so filthy that there was just negative growth within cities that was only supplanted by farmers moving in. That's what the world is like without modern medicine. That's what the world is like without vaccines. That's what the world is like without modern sanitation. So the bedrock on what we need to exist at this entire world, the scientific community, everything, modern uh, multimedia, everything that exists is based around people not dying from random sicknesses that we've cured many years ago. Right. And, we're, and we're sadly falling for it. Now on the same token, a bit of a degree, uh, the people that are dying from it or their kids are getting sick are the people that are ignoring this. So at least for now, and it's not going to be the case forever, the people that are causing this issue are the ones that are suffering this consequence because everyone that is taking it a measles vaccine but then, generally you, but then you also get the stories too of people saying like how they regretted that decision of not vaccinating their kids and then you also see stories of kids who had their parents choose not to vaccinate them go and get vaccinated themselves so i mean the science is there the information is there and it's time for us to stop ignoring